Okay, so here's my uh, my latest acquisition. Um, I, 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 with the winter, I started uh, dabbling in metalworking. I got a, an old South Bend lathe, which I did videos in the fall when I was fixing it up. Um, that's working fairly well. Um, I got a jet a round column mill, and uh, up until now, if I had to cut something down, I've been using a hacksaw, uh, which gets old really fast. Um, so what this is, is a Robertson uh, 4 uh, power hacksaw. I took a lot of it apart, so it's not all here right now, because the, the guy who I picked it up from was able to put a fork, you know, forklift and get it into the back of my truck. Um, he had a nice uh, you know, propane powered forklift that was very fine controls. He was able to, to thread the needle within the, you know, it had an inch and a half of clearance with everything else on it um, in the opening. So he was able to get it in there. Our tractor, the controls are not anywhere near as fine. Um, and uh, moving it within an inch without putting it through the roof would be uh, a chore. So when I first had it, I tied it down to the four straps here and it went fine. And then I was pulling around the corner from my house and I saw it tilt in the back about 10 degrees. Uh, that's when I decided to take all the crap off the top because um, it's about five or 600 pounds um, fully loaded. Right now I figure it's three to 400 pounds. I have the motor off, vice, saw, the, the, the arm the saw rides on, the flywheel, um, and the flywheel shroud, um, all removed in my garage at home. Um, plans for it are basically just to clean it up, degrease it, um, see if everything works. It's a fairly simple machine from my understanding of them. There's not a lot to break. It has a hydraulic lift on the arm so that on the backstroke it doesn't drag the blade across. And it has a coolant feed system right here that has a separate pump in the back and again they're very simple pumps um, but I'll take the two pumps apart and uh, remove years and years of crap from them. The base here is hollow and the coolant goes back into the base and then gets recirculated. Uh, there's a good deal of sludge in there. I'll probably, uh, I'll probably use like a play shovel or something like that and scoop it all out for now. Um, the top you know, is once I removed the grease from the other parts I did, it was actually in decent shape. There was some paint left, some original paint left. Uh, the base, a little bit you know, worse for wear. Um, you know, maybe after I get everything running and verify everything works, take the top off if I can, so I can figure out where it mounts. I have a couple of screw holes here, use an impact screwdriver, and then power wash the inside of it to get the old sludge out because it seems to be a fair amount of oil and the cooling system isn't supposed to be oil. Um, so I'm gonna untie this thing and I'll probably shift it sideways in the back here so that we can get the forks underneath it and put it on the trailer. I figure it'd be a heck of a lot easier to, to lift off the trailer with people than from the back of this truck. I was able to drag it forward, but it uh, it's heavy still. And there's not a lot of space in the back of the truck. <laughs> Getting it apart in the back of the truck was, was fun. Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, with the motor on it, I have to have the seats folded down. Um, yeah, it's about, uh, four and a half feet long. Um, and what, about, about two feet wide, give or take. And, uh, it was 36 inches base to the top. So this would have been a heavy factory machine, uh, at the time. I looked up, um, the manual for it. Uh, the price sheet was around $200 in the 1930s. Uh, I don't know what that is today, but uh, you know, it would be thousands of dollars today. Um, you know, and it's, slow, it, it's definitely slower than a bandsaw, but at that price point that I got this for, the bandsaws I, I would be getting would be cheap Chinese ones. So this should, uh, the blades are cheaper than the bandsaw blades. And the, uh, you know, if I decide I don't like it, I can get rid of this and probably make money from what I paid for it. Because I had to drive quite a ways to get it. And... Uh, selling it where I live in the city, uh, I, I'd have no problem getting rid of it. But, you know, for now I'm not planning on getting rid of it. I just like to clean it up and get it working. So, let's uh, move the camera away, untie this thing, and uh, I'll bring it back when we try loading it on the tractor.
have it. You know, I know, but I'm gonna pull it out of you. Okay? You're up high enough. You're up too high. Down, then I don't have to sit there and walk with you and almost yep. get killed. Okay. So we, we we did a little bit of a country calculation, and uh, that that base is made out of some thick steel. It's not quarter, but it's a little bit thicker than an eighth. Um, so we have a six by six running through the opening, and uh, that allows us to lift it. We're right at the right height now. We're just going to tie the bit. It's back heavy, so we're going to tie the base down to the. Uh, fork so it doesn't slip forward. the camera for you to follow but uh, I don't have a cameraman so I, I wanted to stay with the back to make sure it stayed level um, we strapped and tied it down and uh, that worked so this is a fairly beefy case like I said this right here is a coolant pump it normally draws from down here in the coolant reservoir that tube is long since disintegrated this tube here is hard as a rock so I'll replace that probably too um, but yeah, as far as the condition of all this, the once you remove the grease and the grime, it ain't half bad. Uh, yeah, I don't think the grease nipples were original. Probably over the years, as it got looser and looser, they added that to uh, tighten it up a bit. And for now, I'm going to keep it the way it is. Um, I can put bushings in there to make up the difference, a split bushing or something like that. But uh, that's a bit of work. So, so yeah, I'm going to bring it home. Probably borrow a power washer on this thing. Power washer with some detergent. And uh, the day my wife isn't home to see the mess. And yeah, go from there. I don't. So it's got two tubes. I don't know what this other tube goes to. The first time I've seen it in the light, the guy's barn was rather dark. And uh, it's been in the back of my truck since then. But, uh, I have a shroud that goes over here. I took that off uh, to cover the gears. Um, all the gear teeth look really good. I didn't see any broken gears. Uh, right now this shaft is out. I actually it's out quite a bit. Without the flywheel uh, holding everything in place, it shifted over an inch. But, oh, you can't turn it by hand. Too much torque involved. But uh, I can turn it with this arm here, because I did that already and pinch my finger. It goes like that. So this right here moves the arm back and forth, uh, the saw blade back and forth. Like I said, I've seen them on YouTube a lot. Um, it looked really, really cool. And uh, you know, once I get it cleaned up, it should you know, do everything I need. This will do up to eight inch by eight inch uh, steel, which is, huge. Um, yeah, most of the models were smaller than that, uh, 6x6, 4x4. 
uh, using regular hacksaws. This thing here uses an uh, inch and a half thick hacksaw blades. Um, yeah, I'll bring you guys back when I get to cleaning it up. Um, I'm going to mount it on, a, on some wheels back home. Um, I already ordered some casters for it. I think I'm going to put a piece of steel down the bottom and uh, probably like a half inch steel plate and drill two holes in the top and then put the four holes for the wheels so that we so I can keep it as low as possible because um, my goal is to fit it underneath my workbench and based on my calculations I should just be able to clear it. Uh, we'll see how good my calculations are later. <laughs> so, until next time, thanks for watching.